Y'all gotta chill out, fam. My man's not him. We got a name plate on this locker. Y'all gotta chill out, fam. Ain't nobody over there. <laughs> we just talking. Fam, they over here talking to a blank locker. Ain't nobody in here. Why don't you aim with your light? Wow. Look at the crew love at Amari Cooper's locker. Man, he's the made, hype is real. The hype is real. Headlines all week long. Yep. Amari Cooper everywhere. Welcome into Cover 4. It's a great day here at the Star in Frisco, and we are so pumped for this show. We've got a lot to cover, a lot of Amari talk, locker room stuff. Can't wait any longer, Dave. Kickoff time. Cowboys Nation, thank me later for this advice. I know it's the bye week in the heat of the moment of this Amari Cooper trade. You want to watch Cowboys football. Take it from me, though. Bye weeks are a good thing. On Monday morning, when it's 9 a.m. in Dallas, you are going to be grateful for the energy that you save taking a week off. So just relax. Enjoy the bye week. It's fine. Chill, fam. That's right. Very, very true, Dave. You're right. Well, things went 0 to 100 today in the locker room. You saw what was happening at Amari Cooper's locker, but d -Law also talked today, and he said, hey, Cooper's got to prove to us that he's actually here to work to show us that he's going to get this thing rolling. This is an all Amari kickoff right here, right? Uh, people have been hitting me up about, like, the Cowboys are dumb for wasting a first-round pick on Amari Cooper. Well, actually... Not so much. If you go back and look at the, uh, the NFL draft of wide receivers that Amari Cooper's been drafted, it's been guys like Corey Davis, Corey Coleman, LaCron Treadwell. Not a lot of guys talk about in the first round. If they're going to get a wide right receiver next year in the first round draft, I'd rather hit this guy who I know has done something in this league before. So chill, fam. Everybody chill I'm out with you. I'm with you. Jesse, I'm with you. We'll get more into what we think this means for the offense later. But for now, it is the bye week. So it's time to give out some awards. Doesn't matter to me who wins what award. Trophies. All that matters, trophies. Most dependable award. This one you might not be ready for, but Ooh. Jesse, who's the most dependable cowboy through this? And this is week? one of my guys right here. He always does this on the field and he goes, Oh, Byron Jones. Dead he is giveaway. the most dependable cowboy that they have right now. You look at the way he's graded out this year. He's graded out as one of the top cornerbacks in the National Football League. I always say when you don't hear cornerbacks' names week in and week out, that means they're doing a very, very good job. And Byron Jones for this team who just got moved from safety to cornerback this season under Chris Richard has really showed up and showed out for this Cowboys on the defense end of the ball. And so if you got a guy who can lock down the side of the field, and not, not saying he has to be Deion Sanders, but he's not giving up big plays. You got yourself a good guy. Yeah, we haven't talked about Byron Jones, but he is That's still good. here. That's good. You don't want to be talking You don't about want to talk about it. Don't talk about Still yeah. here on this team, Byron Jones. All right, next up, Dave, who are you giving the out of nowhere award to? Who has jumped Ooh. off the page at you? You say out of nowhere. Hey, we just saw him at the top of this broadcast, Antoine Woods. You talk about a guy that started from the bottom. My goodness. Like, we were not talking about him over the summer. He was not a guy on this depth chart. He beats Travis Frederick in training camp. He looked great in practice. All of a sudden, he's on the roster. He's making plays. He's a D tackle. He's not getting sacks like Marcus Lawrence and those guys, but he has played fantastic. To see him come from the bottom, now he's here on the roster. I'm proud of him. It's been a great first half of the season for Antoine. I completely get behind that all the yeah. way. Bounce back award. This has been huge because there were a lot of turnover this offseason for the team, and a lot of guys who didn't play last year were here now. Tay, who are you crowning? Yeah, well, Lindsey, with his back-to-back -back seasons for the Cowboys, Jalen Smith is the obvious choice for me here. He has just shown up not only in practice, but in games, he has had this consistency that we haven't seen from him before. He has the toughness and the growth, even the leadership ability. I mean, he really took Leighton Vander Esch under his wing these past three weeks while Sean Lee was out. I'm very impressed by him. I really would call him the true leader of the linebackers right now. I know that might Ooh. cause a stir, oh, cause a little okay. bit of stir okay. with the, Sean Lee. Sean Lee is still such a leader, you can't deny that. but. Jalen Smith has stepped up when he needed to. Views from the top. Man. Views from the top. Jalen Smith, wow, how about it? All right, I've got best play so far, and this is just too good. I think Ezekiel Elliott was on his worst behavior on this 34-yard pass Hell from yeah. Dak Prescott. This is one of my favorite plays, not only of the year, but of Ezekiel Elliott's career. This was crazy stuff. And Ezekiel, you're old faithful. We can always count on you, whether you're in the backfield, and now out wide. I want to see more of that, big fella. Lindsay, and what's the motto there? Feed, Feed Zeke. Zeke. 
always feed Zeke. Feeding All right, what about feeding. your Cowboys MVP? I'm letting you take the honors, Dave. I'm going to speak, you know how I like to do this, Tay. I'm gonna to speak directly to you, Demarcus Lawrence, because you know yourself, man. You signed that franchise tag, you didn't think twice about it, and you are out here balling out. I know he hasn't had the sacks in the last few weeks. It doesn't matter, he's already got five and a half. He's making impact plays. This is a guy that brings it every single week. Taylor mentioned him in her kickoff. He is the true leader of this entire defense. He sets the tone. And honestly, there's no telling what the ceiling is for this guy. I, I think the world of him. I hope the Cowboys extend him. And I bet you Demarcus Lawrence is saying, Cowboys, I better find your love in the off season. That's just a guess. That's, That's just a guess. The controller out there. He seriously is its child's play. For it really is. Lawrence, it looks really like sometime it sometimes. It really does. Those offensive linemen, folks. We are just getting started here. We're taking a quick break, but when we come back, we're diving more into this Amari Cooper situation. What does it mean for the offense? What does it mean for Dak Prescott? You can't have everything, but you can have this guy for number one draft pick next. Hey Dallas Cowboys fans, I'm Danny Streck at the AT&T Media Center. The Cowboys made a trade with Oakland for wide receiver Amari Cooper. However, they aren't the only team in the NFC East making moves. The New York Giants traded cornerback Eli Apple to the Saints for a fourth and seventh round pick. They also traded defensive tackle Damon Harrison to the Detroit Lions for a fifth round pick. Coming up, the Cover 4 crew will show the results you voted for in today's polls. How will history define us? The perfect size? Perfect hair? Every box checked? No. We set the tone. We are works of art. Who we are is not defined by what they say, but by what we create. The legacy we build. Fire in our souls. We are strong. We are unstoppable. We, we, we are Cowboys fans. Learning to not make any mistakes. And so. how much work will you get in with some of, like, perhaps Dak Prescott during this bye week? Have you guys set anything up? We haven't set anything up yet, but I'm sure we will. Like over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's the main purpose? You know, you're here with this offense, um, the schemes, the personnel. Did you, you know, get into the system yet? Yeah, man. You ready to take control? <laughs> yes, sir. All I right. came in and hopped right on it. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of Demarcus Lawrence now that you're actually in a room with him? <laughs> Real outgoing guy. <laughs> hey, what you know about the Hot Boys? <laughs> <laughs> no? you, you ain't ready for that one yet? Nah, I ain't ready for that one yet. <laughs> Demarcus, from one reporter to another, I give that an 8 out of 10. Not a bad job. Not bad Not a at bad all. job getting in the I'll take it. it. Yeah. All right, guys, we asked you some questions here out on crowd surfing this afternoon on at cover for Twitter. Follow along if you don't already. We post amazing stuff on there amazing. every single day. Do not miss out. Right. First question we threw at you guys. Can Amari Cooper return to his Pro Bowl days when he was a legend? Yes or no? What did you guys vote? Mm, I said no. You said no. I said no. And I said that because not for this season. Now give me a summer, like if, if he could have the summer 16 that Drake, I mean, Dak did and Zeke, common mix up here, then he might have that. But he has to wait until next season for me to answer that one yet. Okay, so you're tentatively no. I feel, eh, I don't feel like this is a big ask for him. Like I, I feel like he can, and it's gonna be a struggle. I get that, but I'm banking on Amari Cooper getting back to his ways. And I, I really think that he can. Maybe he doesn't make the Pro Bowl because we're seven games in already, but I think he's gonna be a viable threat for this offense. And I think he is gonna do that. All right, what did the crowd say? Yes or no, will Amari Cooper return to his Pro Bowl days? What did we get? Whew, that's a yes. I'm in the that's minority overwhelming. there. Overwhelming. 84% yeah, yes. of you said yes. Okay, wow. what will the Cowboys first road win B. Which yes. place? We got the Eagles coming up, Falcons, 
Colts Falcons, and Giants. Colts. Raise your hand if you voted Colts. You can't see our hands, but mine is raised. Yeah, mine I, is raised as well. Okay, I so mean, we all said Colts, we, right? I mean, I I want to believe in this team. You know, they're going to go up to Lincoln Financial Field. Zeke's going to have his blue tent visor on. He's going to be in the middle of that scrum, yelling at everybody. Get him fired up. But have we seen it? Have we seen it? And the answer is no. They're own. The team, the team wants you to say that they are, because they want. They keep saying this. Are you with me? Are you here? Like. They want you to believe in them. I just don't see that the Eagles will be that first road win for them. And Jason Garrett always tried to make you believe. He always say, you know, whether it's in the parking lot, whether it's in the, the supermarket, mood. Yeah. whether it's, it's in Marvin's room, the mood. Yeah. It's, it doesn't yeah. matter where it happens. That right. Jason Garrett said, we'll lot up and play football. I just don't think one of these teams, the first two, the Eagles or the Falcons, maybe the Colts will happen. Who did our fans choose to get the first win? I have a feeling win? I know the answer. Show I us. appreciate the optimism. Oh, you chose the team with the really oh. big rings, did you? Oh. Oh. Wow. Hey, they're not playing like they're not playing that way though. So maybe the fans know something we don't. All right. Who do you think will win the NFC East? You mentioned those blue tent glasses or visors. I think our fans are wearing those. Show us the yeah. answer. Who will win the NFC East? I'm not giving up on the Eagles yet. Personally. I don't think you can. I know. I really hope fans say the Cowboys because hold on, we're coming home to that NFC East trophy. It is coming back to Dallas. Took a year off. 2017, back here, 2018. I hope right. you're right, man. You voted Cowboys? I voted Cowboys. She did it with confidence, folks. <laughs> Show us what the crowd says out there on this lovely Wednesday afternoon on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. Shocking. Well, we're coming home. And you, can't, listen, you guys got to hey, be better than You can't that. blame them, though. You can't blame them. Okay, the no Amari one, hype. No one has been able to win the NFC. Repeat it. NFC, back, back to back. Champion, back right. to back since right. 2004. So, you th are people really that charged up back. about this trade? That that they're, they are. they feel that optimistic? I good they for are. them. Good for them if so, and I hope they're right. You don't think it's fake love? It it feels a little like fake love to me, honestly, at this point. I mean, we're seven games in. I haven't seen it yet. Doesn't mean it can't happen. A lot of football left. To that play. blue tennis heavy, man. Yeah, Time for, for a sound off. All right, the Cowboys have got the wide receiver position set. They got their number one in here. So what is next for you guys as far as areas of concerns, areas that need addressing, or areas that you're focused on now? I'm going to say the offensive line. Bingo! That, that, that's it for me bingo, right bingo. there. The offensive line is definitely a place where we need to start. We have to shore this thing up. Dak Prescott is a much better quarterback when he has time to set his feet, survey the land, and deliver the football. If they can't get better up front, and we don't know what's going on with Travis Frederick. We are praying all the best for him that he gets back to playing football again, but getting back to a normal life for him is more important. The Cowboys have to be able to hold this blocking up for Dak Prescott so that he's able to deliver the ball to our newly found friend Amari Cooper. This offensive line is so far gone from where it was even just two years ago. And I think you're right. I mean, Dak's got to play better, but this team is built around the O-line. Yes. And now that you've got this receiver in place, I think that's where it starts. I mean, that was like God's plan here. That That's the motto, right? Is That's the identity of this team. Right. And you're seeing through seven weeks, I mean, everyone, even they are saying, that's, we're not where we need to be. Yeah. Absolutely. we got work, 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 work to do. You are correct about that. Sarah. All right, guys, we are out of time today. Thank you so much for tuning in. But first, Jesse, take us to OT. While we may not have a game this week, I think this is the moment where you're looking at this team and how they can come together. Uh, Omari Cooper just joined this team. They don't know each other very well. So if we, I will want to see Dak and his crew get together and work really hard on this uh, week's game plan, this week's technique, getting back into that film room and really, really, really putting things together for this upcoming week against the Tennessee Titans on Monday Night Football. I like it, Jess. You're right. They need to get it together. Well, they did get it together, their information about Omari Cooper. Of course, Garrett is connected to Nick Saban, the old coach of Omari Cooper during his college days but so is tight ends coach Doug Nesmeyer. He, uh, he peeped in Garrett's ear last year and gave him a little bit of knowledge about Amari Cooper that I think paid off in the big run. I started this show with a message, just relax, take the bye week easy. I, I firmly believe that. And just in general, okay, we, we've covered this Amari trade as much as we can. We've beat it into the ground. People are talking about the first round pick, maybe on draft day, Cowboys aren't so happy that they don't have one, but hey, just relax, let all that stuff come to you, live in the moment, and until then, you know, just take care. Take You'll care love. of each other, take care of yourselves. You can't have everything, stuff. but you can have cover four. Always. Yes. Every single day right here. We'll see you guys for another episode tomorrow as we kick it into the bye week. Take Get your care. pound cake and eat it too. <laughs>